Hello, I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the founding and lead pastor of a non-denominational church here in Bloomington Normal called The Tab. And I would like to invite you to join us for worship some Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Tab is located at 1845 West Hovey Avenue in Normal, Illinois. I also want to invite you to visit our ministry website at thetab.tv. There's lots of wonderful resources and ministry there for you to take advantage of. Thank you for being with us today on this Tab Telecast. Here is this week's message. so good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the tab. And uh, we are so grateful to uh, to have you in person and also online. Thank you for joining us live via our tab telecast on Facebook and our YouTube channel. And again, if you ever get the opportunity, please join us in person. Amen. Amen. You know, we've got people coming from about five minutes away to this church. What a drive, what a drive, what a sacrifice, right? Uh, some of you drove 15 minutes to get to church today. Others of you drove 30 minutes to get to church today. We have a family that drives an hour to get to church today. Amen? Amen. So regardless of where you're at, and, and you could have the record. You could drive two hours for, you know, wherever you're at. You, you can have the record today. And I asked that person, boy, they're coming from an hour. Uh, we've had the person drive an hour and a half to get to church. I said, why do you come to the to the tab. And you know what they said to me? A church alive is worth the drive. A church alive is worth the drive. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, a church alive is worth the drive. Amen. You've, you've driven farther for lesser things just this past week. Amen. Come on now. Some of you drove over an hour for lesser things. And uh, God is going to meet you in this place today. God is here. Amen. God is is alive. God is uh, uh, moving in our midst, and we're so grateful for all that He's doing. And this is a church that is alive and full of the presence of the Lord. We love Jesus here, amen, amen. and we love His Word. Well, we are in a summer series of messages entitled God's Apocalyptic Puzzle. Believe it or not, we're going to be wrapping up the series uh, today uh, with uh, some final pieces in, in the puzzle. Uh, we'll speak about those here momentarily. Next Sunday is our last Sunday in our series. And what I would like to do is... Uh have a time of Q&A. So if you've got some questions regarding the end times, regarding the apocalypse, regarding, you know, whatever, uh, the book of Revelation, kind of things that we're, we've been talking about over the last three months, uh, and you would like, you know, some answers or some clarification on, please uh, write those down. You can, you know, put them on a piece of paper and put it in the uh, the offering box today along with your check. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, you can use the tab program. Also, there's a connect card there to write those questions down, or you can email us at info at the tab.tv and we'll get those questions. And I'm going to tailor make our message next Sunday off of your questions. All right. So I want to get all the questions answered to the best of, of our ability regarding this topic. All right. And this topic, again, I, I certainly recognize, I mentioned this a few times over the last three months. This is, this is, this is some heavy stuff. This is some heavy stuff. This is some deep stuff. And uh, for some of you, this, this information, this revelation is new. I certainly recognize that. Uh, for some of us, it's, it's, it's old. I mean, we, we've been talking about this for years, okay? But I, I certainly recognize this is, this is some heavy stuff. This, this type of, of, uh, of sermon series is not preached at every church, all right? And I certainly recognize that. Uh, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't, we shouldn't address it. We shouldn't tackle it. Amen? Amen. Uh, God is giving us some insider information. How many of you, how many of you like insider information? All right. I do. Uh, and God in this series is giving us insider information on what? On what's coming. On what's coming so that we can prepare for, uh, for what's coming and not be surprised by it when it gets here. Because it is coming. The train is coming. Look at your neighbor and tell them the train's coming. 
The train is coming. The train is coming. What's that? Yeah. Choo choo. What's that train called? The train of tribulation. There is a tribulation coming on planet earth the likes of which uh, has never been seen uh, before and thank God since. All right. And we are wanting to uh, to get ready uh, for uh, for what is coming upon the earth. All right. Luke 12. I want to I want to begin uh, today's message by turning to Luke 12, 54 through 56. Jesus said to the crowd, Jesus said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain and it does. How many of you were grateful for the rain yesterday? Amen. And you saw the cloud. I did. I mean, Mindy was getting tired of me talking. I mean, she said, how many times are you going to be thanking God for the rain today? I mean, I was just, every time I looked outside, I was like, thank God. <laughs> thank God for the rain. I mean, I was so, I was so grateful. And I could see the cloud rise, right? In the West, did we not? Some of you saw, the, no, some of you know what I'm talking about, them dark clouds. I'm like, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Now, it wasn't raining. It was not raining when I saw the cloud. But it was just a matter of time. Someone say it's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. And when the south wind blows, you say it's what? It's going to be hot. How many of you know when that wind comes out of that south, it, it, it's going to be hot. And it is, right? And it is. So the signs are what? Are representative of things yet to come. When you see a cloud, it's getting ready to rain. It's just a matter of time. You feel that, that wind coming from the south, it's just a matter of time for that temperature is going to go up. Then Jesus calls his audience a really nice word. <laughs> <laughs> Hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Now look at this question. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Wow. Now, we know, of course, in context, uh, 2,000 years ago, that there were over 100 prophecies in the Old Testament foretelling the coming of Jesus, foretelling the coming of the Messiah. And most people missed it because they weren't ready. They weren't interpreting the signs of the times. Now, I've got some humbling news for us. There's over 800 passages of Scripture. 800. This thing on? 800 passages of Scripture talking about the second coming. So if you miss the second coming and you don't understand it, how is it that you don't know, right? <laughs> the signs of the times and what is happening. And we're, we're seeing the signs. I mean, you have to be, you know, kind of oblivious and out of it not to interpret the present time in which we are living in. And that's what we've been doing during this series, uh, God's Apocalyptic Puzzle. We've been bridging what? Current events with biblical prophecy. We've been seeing how they've been fitting together as a jigsaw puzzle, coming together. And and as the Holy Spirit's been teaching us all, boy, I, I can't tell you, there's probably not a week that's gone by in the last 12 weeks. I don't get a phone call, a text message, an email from some of you say, Pastor Tim, look at this and look at that. And I said, yep, that's a sign. That's a, that's a piece of the puzzle coming together. It's coming together all around the world. Well, Jesus gave his disciples and us today 15 pieces in his apocalyptic puzzle to be watching for from Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. It's called the Olivet Discourse. Uh, he's preaching uh, this message on the Mount of Olives. And by reading and studying just these three chapters, we'll discover that we are living right now in the times of the signs. We are living now in the times of the signs. And there's four purposes of, the, of a sign. Let me just give them to you real quick. A sign does what? Number one, points to something, right? A sign points to something. Number two, it gives direction. You've traveled, some of you again traveled 15, 30 minutes, an hour to get here. You had lots of signs giving you what? Direction. Uh, number three, to mark something has passed. You know, a marker is a sign. And number four, to inform us of something to come. Kind of like that dark cloud rising in the west. Kind of like that hot breeze coming from the south. It's informing us, you better get your umbrella out. 
or you better take cover, right? Whatever that is. A sign gives us information regarding things to come. And that's what this series has been doing. What has it been doing? It's been giving us insider information of things that are happening and things that are yet to come. So let's look at Matthew 24, primarily through this, uh, this message here today. And, uh, and we'll look at Mark 13 and Luke 21 because it's all, you know, the same message from different, different perspectives and points of view. Matthew 24, 1 through 3. Jesus and his disciples, let me kind of set the context. They are on Temple Mount. And the next time we go to Israel, you all are going to go with me. Amen. And we're going to go to the Temple Mount. All right. Hallelujah. I was there. And, uh, and they're leaving the temple compound. They're leaving the temple. As Jesus left the temple and was walking away, his disciples came to him to call his attention to its buildings. And this is a magnificent edifice. I can't tell you how huge this thing is. Just the wall around it will, will take an hour to walk around. We walked around it. Um, Tremendous, but the, but then there's the temple was on top of that, and and the disciples are bragging. They're, they're kind of elbowing Jesus, right? Hey, 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 Jesus, do you see all these things? Say, yeah, yeah, I've been around for a while. <laughs> I, I was here, you know, at eight eight days of age, right? I was dedicated to this temple. What do you mean? Do I see all these things? Of course I do. Do you see all these things? I love Jesus. I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left upon another. Woo. You see, they were right, boy, look at all these mighty buildings. Look at all this, all this, oh, it's so wonderful, Jesus. And Jesus says, yeah, there's coming a day where all these stones are going to be torn down. All these buildings are going to be raised, flattened. And I mean, it, it got their attention. Every one of them will be thrown down, Jesus said. And then they, they went down the Kidron Valley, all right, the Garden of Gethsemane, up the eastern slope of the, or I should say the western slope of the Mount of Olives, and they're sitting there, and so there's a mountain here and a mountain there. The Temple Mount's to the west, Mount of Oz is to the east. And, there, and, you, and, you, and I've been there, and you can be there with me here in the next few years when we go. And uh, you can see across the mountain right into the Temple compound. And they're, you know, sitting down. And Jesus, Jesus uh, uh, is sitting there with his disciples. And as he's sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? Now, they knew enough about Jesus. If Jesus said it's going to happen, it's going to happen, right? And they can remember when they were on the Sea of Galilee and, and, they, and Jesus said, get in the boat, we're going to the other side. What happened? They went to the other side. Now, between one side and the other was a massive, you know, death-defying storm, but they got to the other side. So they knew if Jesus said that there wasn't going to be a stone left on another. It was just a matter of time before that was going to happen. When is this going to happen, they asked. And then they asked a second question. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So the disciples' three questions are this. Number one, when will the destruction of Jerusalem occur? All right. Now, Jesus, again, is giving this message in or around 30 A.D., 30 A.D., approximately, give or take a few years. We know it was 70 A.D. When, when Emperor Nero of the Roman Empire came in and destroyed the temple and, uh, and destroyed Jerusalem. Forty years later, 40 years later, uh, was when this, when this uh, event happened. Number two, they said, what will be the sign of your coming, your second coming? We're going to talk about that here just momentarily. And then when will the end of the age occur? Boy, that's a great question, right? When is the consummation of the age going to, going to, going to happen? And uh, Jesus answers all of these questions, these three questions, by his disciples in the verses to follow. How many of you want to know what those answers are? Well, you came to the right church, because we're going to do it here today as we wrap up this, uh, this series of messages. Matthew 16, verse 3, Jesus said this, again, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. And that's what we want to do. We want to bridge current events with biblical prophecy so as to make what? Sense of the times 
which we are living in, which is what? We're living in the time of the signs. Now, again, these words, this revelation, this teaching of Jesus was 2,000 years ago. So when he's given this, everything was in the future. Think about that, right? None of it had happened, including the destruction of Jerusalem. Everything he, we're getting ready to read was future tense. That's called prophecy. He was foretelling, kind of like that meteorologist, you know. I don't need a meteorologist to tell me what it's doing right now. I just go outside, look, right? But I need a meteorologist to tell me, hey, what's, gonna, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? What's the weather going to be like in three days? What's the weather going to be? Usually it's a week out, right? They forecast a week out. And we can kind of, we plan accordingly, right? Plan on whether we're going to go on a picnic with our family, you know, next weekend or, 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 or not. Based on what? Not facts, the forecast. And every once in a while, the forecast is what? The forecast is wrong. They say it's going to rain, and man, it's 90 and sunny. Right? But pretty good. I'm amazed how much really those meteorologists get right. By and large, they're, they're right most of the time, more times than not. But Jesus, how many of you know, he's never wrong. He's always right. If he says, hey, this is forecasted in the future, this is going to happen in the future, you can what? You can count on it. You can take it to the bank. So Jesus is giving us 15 puzzle pieces of the end times. Now, we've covered some of these uh, in greater detail in this series of messages. By the way, if you've missed any of this message series, please, please, please go back, watch it on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and get caught up. Uh, we covered a lot, and I recognize that, but it's, it's deep and it's good information so that we're not shocked or surprised at what's happening in the earth today. Let's look at the final pieces of the end time puzzle that God is, uh, God is wanting to, to share with us. Can we do that today? All right, the first puzzle piece is, according to Jesus, global deception and demonism, demonic teachings and activity. Matthew 24, verse 4 through 5, the first thing Jesus says is, watch out, Get, you know, beware that what? No one deceives you. The first piece of the puzzle is global deception. For many, Jesus said, will come in my name claiming, quote, I am the Christ, and will what? And will deceive many. Many people have come and, uh, and, and claimed, hey, they're the Messiah, they're the Savior, you know, and they have what? They have deceived many. Again, we've seen that over the last 2,000 years and even within the last 100 years in our country. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. The Apostle Paul writing to, to young Timothy says this, the Spirit, capital S, that's the Holy Spirit, right? The Spirit clearly says, in other words, this isn't, this isn't confusion, this is clearly. The Spirit clearly says that in the last days, what days? The last days, and we're living in the last days, amen. How many of you would say we're living in the last days? Amen. Every hand should go up, even on in, 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 in social media land. Every hand. We are living in the last days, because we are. But, all right, this again, this was 2,000 years ago. We're no longer living in the last days. We're, we're, we're not even living in the last hour. I believe, again, this is my humble belief, I think we're living in the last minutes. The last minutes. We could be living in the last seconds of the last days. I, you've heard me say this in numerous times, even just this year. I think we're living in the two-minute countdown here, leading up to the rapture of the church, because of all the all of the signs of the times. I've got my little my little uh, um, whiteboard here today, right? And uh, I, I probably ought to have my little marker out here. You know how you look at maps and it says you are here. You know, you look at the map. I, I should put it over here. You, we, you are right here, <laughs> right there. We're right up to the porch, the precipice of the rapture of the church. The next, the next um, piece of the puzzle to be placed is what? The global rapture of the church. The Spirit clearly says that in the last days, some will what? Abandon the faith. Boy, have we not seen that? I have got pastor friends, pastor friends, people who I used to go and listen to, who had some pretty b big platforms and pulpits, who have forsook the faith, have renounced Jesus Christ, 
who writ, who wrote New York Times best-selling Christian books and have abandoned the faith. Now, that shouldn't shock me. That doesn't shock me. That happens to shock. It just shocks me who it happens to. Oh, my gosh. I mean, Mindy and I, we went and heard this guy, this young man preach for two hours in the hottest service I've ever been in. It was 110 in this, in this building. I mean, it was the, and I thought, you know, half hour into it, all right, he's going to wrap this thing up, hour into it. But I looked at him, he didn't, he didn't show any signs of stopping, honey. We might be here for, I mean, we're losing weight. It's like the sun in there. I mean, I mean, this guy, and he was pulling tens of thousands of crowd, people in crowds, is abandoned the faith. It's sad. But this is a sign. The sign of the time will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Can I give you one of the greatest lies and one of the greatest deceptions being being talked about today in the body of Christ and has taken out more pastors than 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 any other? Just just one. Can I share just one? Just say just one pastor. Just one. Don't don't have time for two. Just give us one. All roads lead to heaven. All roads lead to heaven. You're fine. I'm fine. Everybody's fine. Come on now. Doesn't matter what religion you practice, just we're all climbing the same mountain and leading to the same summit. Deception. Deception. Deceiving spirits. Things taught by demons is what? Going to be global. Global deception. Global demonism. Now we know, but per this, this series of, of messages, we know what the global religion will be during the tribulation. It will be global worship of who? The Antichrist. Of Satan. Isn't it interesting? Even today, there are there are there are satanic temples. There are uh, prophets of Baal, symbols of Baal worship being erected even in our country today. Demonism. Puzzle piece number two. We got to keep moving, Pastor Tim. Keep moving. Uh, global wars and battles. Matthew 24, verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. I mean, again, look, over the last 2,000 years, how many wars? Just in the last 100 years, we've had two world wars. Just in the last 100 years. This is a sign of the times. And as we go further and further closer to the global rapture, certainly when you get into the tribulation, it's going to be what? Global wars and global battles. Piece number three, global racism and global conflicts. Matthew 24, verse 7, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now, again, I've taught you that that word nation in the Greek is actually the word what? Ethnos, which means what? Ethnicities. That's where we get the ethnicities. Have we not seen just in the last few years a rise in racism? Now, again, that thing's, you know, stuck up its ugly head from time to time in our country. But just within the last few years, the, the racial divide, even in our country, has become greater and greater and greater, right? It's a sign of the times, let alone uh, in other countries and parts of our, of, our, of our globe. Nation will rise against nation, ethnos against ethnos, and kingdom against kingdom. Now, there's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And isn't it interesting? What are we seeing today more times than not? We're seeing a clash of kingdoms. We're seeing the kingdom of darkness attack the kingdom of light, the kingdom of light attacking the kingdom of darkness. And, and you know what I hear the Holy Spirit say? There's, there's coming a removal of the gray. You're either in one or in the other. God's removing the fence. How many of you know some people that are sitting on the fence today? They're playing church. They're playing with, with their faith. They're playing with Christianity. They're playing with their, their, their belief in God. And, and God's removing the fence. There's coming a time. And, and especially in the seven-year tribulation period where you have, people have to decide. You're either with the Antichrist or you're with Jesus Christ. You're either going to receive the mark of the beast or you're going to receive the mark of Christ. Amen? You're going to receive a seal. And God is moving and removing what? The fence. The fence. Uh, Jesus said in Revelation 3 to the church of Laodicea, He said, you know, you're, you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. In other words, you're riding on the fence. And you know what you want, make me want to do? This is our nice little sweet baby Jesus here now. You make me want to 
throw up. That's a nice word. <laughs> what do you say? That's what he said. You make me want to spew. And God's removing. There's nothing worse than what? Someone that's, that's got one foot in one kingdom and one foot in the other. It's time to decide. It's time to decide which kingdom you are going to be in. Someone say, be in the kingdom of light. Be in the kingdom of light. I mean, be all the way in. Don't, don't, don't play with the, the fence. Don't see, well, let's see how close I can get and still be in the kingdom. No, I would get as far into that kingdom of light as we can. Amen? Yeah. I don't want any doubt on what side we're on. Peace number, what peace are we on? Four. Peace number four. All right. Peace number four. Global catastrophes and disasters. Boy, are we not seeing that? Matthew 24. 7 and 8, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are what? The beginning of birth pains. Now, again, we've seen most of these signs, again, over the last 2,000 years in this region and in that region, kind of locally. We're, we've seen it from time to time, right? Um, but, but as we get closer to the consummation of the age, closer to the global rapture, let alone into the seven-year tribulation, it's going to be happening globally. So many, they can't report all of it. Global catastrophes and disasters. Luke 21, 25 says, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the earth, nations will be what? In anguish and perplexity at what? These global catastrophes, these global disasters. Some of them are called, nat we call them natural disasters, right? Earthquakes, tsunamis. Those types of things. The, uh, they will be, people will be in anguish and they will be perplexed at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. There's just, it's nothing, we've never seen anything like it. Again, on a global scale. This is a, this is a piece of the, of the puzzle. Jesus is talking about what's going to happen in the future. Piece number five. Global famines and global pestilences. I've read numerous articles, and you did too, probably this, this, this past week. Guess what's coming? A shortage of food. A shortage of food. Famines, pestilences on a global scale. On a global scale. Well, this has been prophesied. Luke 21, 11, There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in what? in various places, all over. It won't just be this country or that country or this region or that region. It will be global. It will be global. Go back after this series of messages. I'm reading, I'm reading the book of Revelation again. I might just read it from here till Jesus comes for me. I am reading the book of Revelation with new eyes. I am. I'm reading it. And you, you get into about Revelation 6 through 19, and it's talking about the seven-year tribulation when all of this stuff that, we're, that he prophesied in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13 comes into fruition. Boy, it's like, yeah, I can see it. Global famines, global pestilences, global earthquakes, global natural disasters in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Matthew, excuse me, puzzle piece number six. Global events and signs, fearful events and great signs. Luke 21, 11 says, there will be fearful events and great signs from where? From heaven. From heaven. Uh, and, and boy, we, you know, we, we say around here, the best is yet to come. Amen. The, and it is. How do you know that, Pastor Tim? Because the rapture is on the horizon. Heaven is in your future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, that, that needs to make us all smile. This is, you, you ought to be happy about that. Heaven is in your future. Your happiest moment is yet to be lived. Your greatest day has yet to be lived. It is in your future. Amen. The best is yet to come for you. But the worst is yet to come for what? For this old world. For those that, that hate the Lord and, and, and mock and scoff at the Word of God, I mean, the worst is yet to come. It's called the tribulation. I mean, it's horrific times. Fearful events and signs are what? Are coming from heaven. The seven-year tribulation is what? God's wrath and judgment on this world that has uh, denied Him and cursed Him and mocked Him. Right? It's coming. 
Luke 21. Let's look at Luke's, Luke's uh, take on this global events and signs. Luke 21, 25 says there will be what? Signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. And what will be the effects of this? Watch this now. Global events, fearful signs. People will faint from terror. They're just going to pass out. You want to talk, see COVID, this old COVID thing? That's nothing. That's just a scratch on the surface as to what's coming. I mean, pe I mean, just people are going to be so racked with fear and anxiety, they're going to pass out. Apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be what? Will be shaken. I mean, it, this is, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming in the future. The worst is yet to come. Joel, the prophet from the, one of the prophets from the Old Testament, prophesied about this in his, in his uh, book. He said, I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before what? Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Right? So as we get into, or I should say the world gets into this seven-year tribulation, it's going to grow worse and worse and worse and worse and worse right up to what? The coming of the Lord. Globally, global signs, pieces of the puzzle that are coming together. Piece number seven, write this down. Global persecutions and death of God's people. Matthew 24, verse 9. Jesus how many of you know when Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives talking to this people? I mean, I think their eyes were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, oh my land, why did we ask him these questions? <laughs> and then he turns to them and says, and if that wasn't bad enough, you're going to be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations, by all ethnoses, because of who? Because of me. Boy, have we not seen that over the last 2,000 years? Matter of fact, again, 11 out of the 12 disciples, apostles of Christ were martyred. They were persecuted. They were put to death, except for John. And they tried to kill John. Y'all remember that, right? And they couldn't kill him. They hated him. And uh, boy, we're seeing the rise in this today, are we not? Even in America. Where people are going to what? Hate you, hate me, hate preaching like this, hate churches like this. Why? Because we, we, we preach the truth here. We preach the Word of God. We stand for the Word of God. We're unashamed. But here's some good news. Can I give you some good news? Say, give it to me, Pastor. Give it to me real good. Yes. Hebrews 10, 39. We do not belong to those who shrink back. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, we don't. We don't belong to those who shrink back and backslide and are what? Destroyed. This isn't a time to backslide. This isn't a time to play, you know, Christianity. Play with your faith. Uh, we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have what? Who have faith, faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ, and as a result of our faith, we're what? We're saved. Saved from what? Saved from the coming tribulation. Saved from the coming wrath of God. Saved from all this stuff we've been talking about. Now again, you know, uh, this, this, this series and this message, these messages can cause what? Can cause anxiety and fear to arise in people's hearts and lives. And, and, and it should, listen to this, if you're not right with the Lord. You better be afraid. You better be scared. Matter of fact, I hope to scare hell right out of you. Scare the hell right out of you. Get you into the kingdom of God if I have to. That's old time preaching. It was a fire and brimstone. I mean, they preached the room so hot, people would run to the altar to get saved. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know this is odd preaching. This is odd that people say, hey, we, I hope to scare you out of hell. If that's what I got to do to get you saved, I'll do it. And God's going to save us from the coming tribulation. Hallelujah. I'm about to get born again again. I know that's bad theology, but that's good preaching. <laughs> Amen. We have faith and we're saved from what? From the judgment of God, the wrath of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's who we are. That's who we are, uh, church. And listen, y'all need to know this and you already know it, but let me just say it. You got a pastor that ain't going back down. 
this guy and go back down. See, when you're not afraid to die, you're not afraid to live. Write that down. When you're not afraid to die, you're not afraid to live. I'm not afraid to die. I've been there numerous times. Looked at it. Came back. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> it really isn't. You just kind of walk right over. Well, there we go. No, when you're not afraid, when you know where you're going, when you really believe in Jesus, when this just isn't nice, a little Sunday school lesson, you know, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It, when it's more than just a song, when it's when you believe that you believe that you believe, when you know that you know that you know, yeah. no one, you're untouchable. Yeah. What's the devil going to do? Worst thing, kill me, devil. Okay, I'll go to heaven. <laughs> Thank you for promoting me. <laughs> we need to get proper perspective on this thing. Amen? Amen. We're not going to be, you know, people were, uh, all right, you, you can't talk me out of it. You can't talk me out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. And I know they can't talk you out of it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. We're in this thing to the end. Amen. Amen. We're on the winning side. Someone say we're on the winning side. We're on the winning side. We win. Matt, <laughs> puzzle piece number eight. I got to hurry. Global scoffers and mockers. Global scoffers and mockers. Second Peter 3. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, and what days are we living in? We're living in the last days, last hours, last moments, last minutes. In the last days, scoffers will come. Boy, aren't there scoffers everywhere? Come on now. Scoffing and following their own evil desires. And they will say, quote, where is this coming that he promised? Pastor Tim, you're preaching about all this rapture stuff. Where, well, where is it? Mocking me, scoffing. Come on now. Mocking you, scoffing you for believing in it. My land, it hasn't happened for 2,000 years. No, because it's not the right time. But it's coming. It's coming, right? Like that rain cloud. The rain's coming. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. You can hear the scoffing, right? Yeah. Global scoffers, global mockers. Uh, Jude, verse 18. Uh, Jude says, now, now who is Jude? Jude was Jesus' half-brother. Jude, listen to this. The Holy Spirit taught me this this past week. I thought, boy, that's good. Whenever the Holy Spirit teaches you, it's always good. Amen. He said Jude was a scoffer. Jude didn't believe in Jesus until after the resurrection. Neither did James. The book of James, the book of Jude, those are half-brothers of Jesus. And they, didn't, they scoffed him. Because you know what? If they, they knew who he was. I mean, they grew up with him. They went to bed with him. They played ball up in the streets of Nazareth with him. You know, they, 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 they saw him, you know, cry and run back to mama's lap when he skinned his knee. And that's the hardest thing. I mean, it would be hard for, again, family to recognize, hey, this is the son of God here. This is the savior of the world. You know, they, they, they knew his humanity. They couldn't see the, the deity until after the resurrection. Jude was a scoffer. And this is what he said. In the last times, last days, there will be scoffers. Who will what? Who will follow their ungodly desires. Right? They're going to scoff and they're going to mock at you. Don't be surprised at that. Don't, don't be surprised when you're persecuted by family members and friends and co-workers and, and neighbors. I mean, at this, at this thing. Oh, you, I mean, some of you are being scoffed just for coming to church. <sighs> Why do you go to church? You don't need that. Right? Why do you read the Bible? You don't need that. Scoffers. Globally will come on the horizon. Piece number nine. As a result, global backsliding and global forsaking of the faith. Matthew 24, 10 says, at that time, what time? The end time. Many, many will turn away from what? From the faith. How horrible, right? There's going to come a time where there's going to be global backsliding, global forsaking of what? of the faith in these last times. And I tell you what, right now, there's nothing more that hurts the heart of a pastor when people leave. When people that were once in, in the church and excited about Jesus, just, they go AWOL. I, I mean, it just breaks my heart. I know it breaks your heart too. And, and I reach out and we reach out to them as a church, say, hey, we've missed you, come back. Don't, don't, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Don't forsake the faith. Don't forsake prayer. Don't forsake reading the word. Don't forsake coming to church. 
This isn't a time to backslide. This is a time to what? I don't know what the opposite of back. <laughs> Go forward, right? <laughs> And isn't it interesting? That's the word, by the way, Jesus gave us, the Holy Spirit gave us in January for this year, is forward. We're going forward into our future. The best is yet to come. Remember, God's got something great for you in 2022. Amen? Amen. We're not going back. We're going forward. We're advancing. There it is. We're advancing. <laughs> right? We're going forward. That's what phase two is all about. We're, we're, we're not going back. We're going forward. First Timothy 4, 1, again, the Spirit clearly says that in the last days, some will abandon the faith, backslide, follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Puzzle piece number 10, global betrayal and hatred. We're already seeing this. Matthew 24, verse 10, at that time, the end times, many will betray and hate each other. It's amazing. Betrayal. Because here's the thing. Again, we're talking about not just these times, because future events cast their shadows before them. We're seeing the shadows of these things, right? Little here, little there already. This is a reality in most communist countries, by the way. Christianity is illegal. And people are betraying one another. Matter of fact, let's just look at it. Luke 21. Jesus said, you will be betrayed by who? And he, he calls them out. You will be betrayed even by parents by brothers, by relatives, and friends. Well, that covers pretty much everybody in my life. And they will what? Put some of you to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. And, and there's even parts in, in communist countries today, people are, are, are betraying family members that are practicing Christianity, and they're what? They're being imprisoned. Some of them are being killed even today. But you fast forward to the tribulation period, and every major world religion is banned except for what? Satan worship, worship of the, of the beast, of the Antichrist. And if you worship anyone or anything else other than him, you're what? You're put to death. And people are going to betray one another and hate one another. Peace, no, boy, aren't you glad you're not going to be around for this mess? Yeah. Hallelujah. Peace number 11. A rise in global false prophets and false religions. Matthew 24, 11, Jesus said, Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Have we not seen that over the last 2,000 years? We've seen that. Many false prophets. And we know, uh, per last Sunday, there will be what? A coming false prophet. There will be one. There will be a global false prophet that will establish a global religion. But before that, many false prophets will appear. Luke 21, verse 8, Jesus said, Take heed that you're not deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. The time has drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. Now, how can we take heed and not be deceived? Very simply. Please listen to this. Right here. This is the Word of God. If any person, man, woman, child, I don't care, angel shows up and preaches anything outside the Word of God, it's deception. It's deception. It's got to be in the Word of God. This is truth. Everything else is a lie. It just is. I know in this age of tolerance that rubs everyone raw, but it's true. It's true. And in the end, it will prove true. It's just what? It's just a matter of time. Puzzle piece number 12. Boy, we're seeing this one already. But it's going to increase. Global apathy and wickedness. Jesus said, Matthew 24, 12, and 13, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow what? Cold. Boy, that's a bad thing when your love grows cold. Amen. But he who stands firm to the end will be what? Will be saved. Let me encourage you, stand firm. Stand firm in the end. Stand firm in your faith to the end, and you will be what? You will be saved from the coming tribulation. You will be saved from the coming wrath of God. Upon, that's coming upon the earth. But because of the increase of wickedness, because of all the stuff we're seeing, it's going to cause some who love the Lord, who were once white hot, red hot for the Lord, to grow what? To grow cold. The Apostle Paul, talking about this global, ap global apathy and wickedness coming upon the earth, wrote to uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Can we just mark some of these things and see if we're, if we're living in these days and times? Paul says, mark this. Talking about 
global apathy, global wickedness in the last days. There will be terrible times in the last days. And he says, mark this. So let's mark it. See if, it, see if, we, if it's true in our day. People will be lovers of themselves. Check. Okay, we got that one checked off. Lovers of money. Check. Boastful. Check. Proud. Check. Abusive. Check. Oh boy. Disobedient to parents. Double check. Right? <laughs> Ungrateful. Check. Unholy. Check. Without love. Check. Unforgiving. Slanderous, without self control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Check, check, check. Come on now. Check, check, check. Are we not seeing these things? Having, watch this now, this is talking about the church, I believe, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Having a for it all look y'all look good all, all you know we we do a bunch of religious religious acts, but we don't have what we don't have the Lord in our hearts. Having you, you you look like a Christian, but you're not a Christian. You've denied the power thereof, the power of of the Holy Spirit. And here's here's the exhortation. Are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? I'm glad you are. The Apostle Paul says to the church. Have nothing to do with such people. People that are apathetic, people that are wicked, people that don't love the Lord, that don't love the things of God, that don't love coming to church, just have nothing to do with them. Walk away. Why? Because what happens when you mix hot water with cold water? Does it get hotter? It gets colder every time. It goes from hot to lukewarm to cold. See, when you, it matters who you hang out with. It matters the church you go to. It matters the fellowship you keep, the company you keep. It matters. Teenagers, it matters who your friends are. It, are they encouraging you, right, to come to youth group? Are they encouraging you, right? Come on now. It, it matters. Are, they, are, are your friends encouraging you to come to church and be faithful, Right? Or are they are they scoffing and mocking at this? I, it's serious business. This is this is what's happening in the earth today, and that leads to puzzle piece number thirteen: global complacency and compliance. Aren't we seeing this? Complacency is on the rise. Compliance is on the rise. First Thessalonians five three, Paul says, while people are saying, "Peace and safety." Destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not what? Escape. They will not escape. Why? Because, and escape what? Escape the coming tribulation. People that are saying, hey, all is well. Oh, we don't, I don't need Jesus. I don't need God. I don't need to pray. I don't need to come to church. I don't need to give. I don't need, right? Complacent and compliant to what is happening in the world today. They're going to they're gonna be what? They're going to be left behind. They will not escape the coming wrath. This happened, and there, this is a whole other message, and someday I hope to preach it. I really do, as the Holy Spirit gives me the green light to do it someday. Why I believe in the rapture of the church. And one of the reasons I believe in the pre-trib rapture of the church is because of what God did preceding regarding the separation of the just and unjust, the righteous and the unrighteous. One such example Jesus throws into this message. Just to clarify, Matthew 24, again, this is all, this is, you need to read Matthew 24 this afternoon. Yes. All right? Yes. Go back and read it. This is what Jesus says, talking about the global complacency and compliance that's going to precede his second coming. He references Noah. Remember Noah? Little Noah building an ark, 10 story high. 10 stories. Some of us have been to the ark actual size. We need to go back again. We really do. And go back. It's amazing. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So, so Jesus is getting ready to educate us as what, it, what the climate, the culture will be like at the time of His second coming. And He references it as to the days of Noah. For in the days before the flood, okay, before it rained, People were doing what? 
<laughs> people were eating. People were drinking. People were marrying and being given in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. See, it was life as usual. I mean, here's this prophet. You know, this, I mean, he, he was crazy. By, 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 you know, the Wall Street Journal and Time and all the major media outlets of his day. Here's crazy old man Noah building this ark, building this boat. And every day they'd come out and interview him, you know, hey, how are we doing here? And why are you doing this? Because it's going to rain. It's going to rain. The whole world is going to be diluged in water. You better get right. You better get on the boat or you're going to get left. And they didn't what? They mocked him. They scoffed him. They were apathetic and complacent. They went about their days just like usual. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing, watch this now, they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. The prophet warned them, there's coming a storm. There's coming a storm the likes of which the seas have never seen. The whole, I mean, he was telling them, he was prophesying. Get ready, get right with God, get on the boat. And then the flood came. Now, Jesus says this, that is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, prophets, pastors like Pastor Tim are telling us, get right with God, get ready. There's a train coming. There's a tribulation period coming upon the likes of which we've never seen. The full manifestation and events are not here. We're just seeing the little showers here, right? Remember, you are here. We are here. We're just seeing a little here, a little there. But the whole flood, the whole storm is getting ready to come upon the earth. Two will be left in the field. Two men will be, excuse me. Two men will be in the field on the day preceding what? The rapture of the church. Are you watching this? Farmers. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken. Yeah, just like that. And what happens to the other one? He's left. He's left behind. Some of you watch the movies. If you haven't watched the movies, you need to watch that movie. Two people just working in the field. <laughs> one's taken, one's left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. Don't know where that's at, but I'm sure Jesus is somewhere. Not in my house. <laughs> we got a mixer. We got, we got a mixer. Right? Two women <laughs> will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken. The other left. Are you seeing this thing? Talking about the rapture of the church. Therefore, keep watch. Keep watch of what? The signs. Watch the signs. Watch, right? Not just natural, global. Watch these signs. Because, and Jesus says this, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. See? And people, oh, I, I've got time to get right with God. i got time. No, 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 no. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come like that. Twinkling of an eye. The rapture. And we're gone. There will be no more time to repent. And once the rapture happens, guess what? Then the seven-year countdown begins. And the global tribulation. And you're going to be left behind. Don't be left behind. Turn to your neighbor, elbow him real good. Say, don't be left behind. Don't be left behind. Don't be left behind. Piece number 14. Piece number 14. This leads to you and I. Global missions and evangelism. You know what we need to be doing, church? And again, this is where we're going in September. I already got my September series titled, Ready to Go. It's, it's what do we do from here? What do we do from here? You witness. You evangelize like your family and friends. Eternity depends on it. Matthew 24, 14. Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, all ethnicities, and then what will happen? Can I read it up on the screen? And then the end will come. Now, he's, seen, he's saying these words 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. And he's saying, listen, the end isn't going to come until what? The gospel of the kingdom of God, of Jesus Christ, is preached to everybody in the world. Now, 2,000 years ago, they are thinking, my land, we're going to do a lot of walking. We're going to have to get on a lot of boats. This is before planes, trains, and automobiles. 
But how many of you know today, I'm speaking to a camera, and you can log into that camera anywhere in the world today and hear the message of the gospel. More Bibles, more Christian literature, Christian TV, Christian programming, Christian missionaries and evangelists are all around the world today. It's, 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 it's so easy. It's happening. Global missions and evangelism are happening today. We're, we're what? We're right here. We're right here. We're right there. Mark 13, verse 10, Jesus said, The gospel must first be preached to all nations, right, before the end comes. Luke 21, 12 through 13, You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. I love this. In other words, you know, you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be mocked, and you're going to be scoffed at, made fun of. But use it as what? As a platform to share your testimony. And that's what these, these apostles did. I mean, every, everywhere Paul went, you know, he was put in prison. He was beaten. He was mocked. He was stoned with rocks and beat with clubs and all this stuff and brought before this person and that person. Every time he did, he just talked about Jesus. He just talked about Jesus. Why? Because he knew the gospel must be preached before the second coming. Now, that's 14 pieces in the puzzle. I've got one more. Are you ready for this? It's a good thing you're sitting down. All 14 pieces and all other pieces we've talked about in this series lead up to this last piece. This last piece is the largest piece. It is, it is going to be the global event of global events. Are you ready for this? Oh, I, can, I, 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 I can't hardly wait <laughs> for this. I mean, how many of you, you know, get excited about your birthday, you know, my birthday's tomorrow or Christmas. Remember being a little kid, you know, Christmas, I couldn't hardly sleep on Christmas Eve because I was so excited for the, pre come on now. You're just so excited about what's getting ready to come, this last, this last thing. Piece number 15, the final and last piece of God's apocalyptic puzzle is this, the global return of Jesus Christ and judgment of the world. Mark 13, 23 through 27, Jesus says, take heed. See, I have told you all things beforehand. Did you catch that? Jesus says, I'm giving you all the pieces to the puzzle. I'm telling you all these things beforehand before it even happens. After that, tribulation, the sun will be darkened. Okay, let me slow down. In those days, talking about the tribulation, after the tribulation, so it's here, right here. After the tribulation, after all these things have taken place, read the book of Revelation. Did I say that today? I'm reading the book of Revelation. And let me remind you, one out of two people who are left behind during the tribulation die in the seven-year period. You want to talk about math? I mean, come on now. And Jesus says, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall. And the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then, someone say then. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God for then. Yeah. Then they will see. Who will see? The people that are on earth at the end of the tribulation. Including the Antichrist and the beast and that old serpent, the devil, the dragon. Then they will see. The Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Hallelujah. This isn't Jesus. See, here's the thing. When Jesus comes for you and I in the rapture, it's a twinkling of an eye. They're not going to see him. We're just, we, we're going to disappear. Two men in the field, two women in the kitchen, one left behind, one taken. Boom. But not the second coming. The second coming, he is coming back and everybody on the world is going to see him. Why? Because there's still going to be video cameras. And he's coming back to Jerusalem. He's coming back to the Mount of Olives. But everybody in the world is going to see him through technology. Are you with me? Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels. See this thing. Most of us have seen, well, some of us have seen angels. All right? Not just read about them in the books, seen them. I've seen numerous angels. We know they're real. But think about this. The whole world's going to see angels. Not just Jesus. They're going to see angels flying in the heavens. 
<laughs> and watch what they're doing. And I can't wait for this. And then you will, then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds. Those are the people, the saints that have they've come through the great tribulation that are still alive. Many of them will be martyred from the farthest part of earth to the farthest part of heaven. Luke 21, 27, 28. Watch this now. Then, talking about the second coming. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in, in a cloud with power and great glory. Now these things begin to take place. When these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is what? Is drawing nigh, is drawing near. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Glory be to God. And, and listen, you can read about this in the, in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, 19, and we're what? We're coming back with Jesus. Why? Because we're with Jesus in heaven after the rapture. And so the rapture, we go up with Jesus, and the second coming, we come back down with Jesus and all the angels of heaven. Now, I want to close with one last question. The question is this, are you rapture ready? Are you ready? Are you right with God? Are you at peace with the Lord? Or are you just playing this thing? Joel, Joel writes in Joel 2, again, of the apocalypse. And he inserts this verse in verse 32. It's a verse of hope. And, and here it is. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you called on the name of the Lord, my friend? Have you called, have you invited him to come into your heart and life to be your personal Lord and Savior? If not, I would encourage you to do so. It's, we still have time. We still have time to get ready for the rapture. No man knows the day or the hour, but we know the signs of the times. And we're seeing it all around us, all of these things beginning to take place. Now, the full manifestation will happen here. The full manifestation will happen, but we're seeing it right now. Glimpses here, glimpses there of all this stuff. And, and my goal as your pastor is to make sure you're rapture ready. You are ready to go. You're the one that gets taken and not left behind. I want everybody at the tab to whoa, just yes. go up. Yes. Well, I, I, I mean, it'll be a sad day for this pastor if there's one person left after the, after the rapture. Boy, when that next Sunday happens, I hope nobody's here. But I just hope nobody's here. We're all in heaven. And we're saying, thank God, thank God, Pastor, you got us rapture ready. Thank God you preached the gospel. Thank God you gave us opportunities to come to faith in Jesus. And that's what we're going to do between now and whenever this happens, this event happens. We don't know when it's going to happen. Don't know what year. But the rapture is going to happen. The tribulation is going to happen. The second coming is going to happen. And we've got to get ready. Jesus said, you see a dark cloud rising in the west, it's going to rain. You feel a, a hot breeze coming from the south, it's going to be hot. Can't you see the signs? Can't you see the pieces of the puzzle starting to come together? It's time to get ready. It's time to get rapture ready. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me today? If you're here this morning or you're watching online, and you would say, Pastor Tim, I'm not rapture ready. I am fearful and afraid that I'm going to get left behind and have to go through the tribulation period. And I don't want to. I want to be saved. I want to have the assurance of my salvation, the blessed hope of heaven. Well, I've got good news for you, my friend. You can pray a prayer right now, believing in receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you can be assured for heaven as if you are already there. Pray this prayer with me, and everybody's going to pray it out loud with you in agreement. Say these words, Dear God, I come before you this morning, a sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and life, and be my Lord and Savior, and help me live for you, and help me be a witness for you all the days of my life until you come for me in the rapture of the church. This I ask and pray 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and amen and amen. Put your hands together. Hallelujah.